Hello and welcome or welcome back. When I posted my last video, I got a ton of requests for a wardrobe update. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you can probably tell pretty immediately that not much has changed. A few things have left, a few things bit the dust, and a couple of things are new, but for the most part, it stayed pretty consistent. So what I wanna do today is have a bit of a wardrobe chat. I wanna walk through each of my pieces, talk about what I'm wearing, what I'm not getting as much use out of, and sort of explain my thought process for what I've decided to include in my wardrobe. And I'm hoping that if any of you are in the process of paring down your own wardrobes, then hearing somebody else's thought process for how they've gotten to this point might help you to decide what to include in yours. So let's get into it. So first things first, I'm wearing lounge clothes today because one, it's Saturday when I'm filming this, and two, I wanted you to be able to see everything that I have in what I consider to be my wardrobe or my pieces of day wear, things that I usually typically wear out of the house. And I have 31 items for the entire year right now, and the breakdown is as follows. I have 13 tops, three to four sweaters. If you can't, if you don't have a good view right now, I'll show you that in a second, and I'll get into why I say I have three to four sweaters. I have four pairs of shorts, four pairs of jeans, one pair of black pants, and I also have five pieces of outerwear that I keep in a different closet. I keep those in the front closet of my house so they're easy to grab on my way out. So I have 31 items for the year, and these pieces, again, are pieces that I've had for a while. Not much has changed in my wardrobe. I've had most of these things for if not two years greater than two years. I've had a lot of these things since before I started a YouTube channel, since before I started talking about minimalism at all. So these are things that I've gravitated towards for a long time. And I find that I gravitate towards basic pieces, pieces that are pretty classic and timeless and don't have a lot of embellishment. And I find that that allows me to get more mileage out of a piece since I have such a small wardrobe. I'm wearing these things on a much heavier rotation and if they are sort of more classic, then I find that they are things that I can get a lot more use out of and people don't notice you wearing them as much. Anyway, let's jump into each of the categories. So starting with tops, I have three tank tops, one short sleeve shirt, three three quarter sleeve shirts, and one, two, three, four, five, six long sleeve tops. I actually get a ton of use out of long sleeve tops all year round, even in the summer, because I just roll up the sleeves. But I guess we'll get to those in a minute. So starting at the front, I have three tank tops. I live in a place with a typically warm climate, and so when it's hot in the summer months and you kind of want as little clothing touching you as possible, it's nice to have some tank tops. So I have this black and white tank top, I have this black plain cotton tank, and then I have this navy. It might be coming off as black on camera, but it is navy. It's a little bit of a nicer material. It's actually kind of thicker. It has like two layers of fabric to it, so it's kind of hefty, and it's just a little more clean and polished than something like a cotton tank top. So I actually get a ton of use out of this top for formal occasions. This top paired with my black pants is my go-to formal look, and I find that I don't have that many formal functions to go to. I've worn this to weddings before, and it's been just fine. It's really versatile. Um, so I get a ton of use, well, not a ton of use out of this top, but it is important to have when I need it for a formal occasion. And then my black and white striped top and this black top, I, I mean, they're pretty simple, they're pretty basic, they're easy to throw on in the summer months, and again, whenever you don't want any clothing touching you, Tank tops can be an asset. So I've got those three guys, and then I have a black linen short sleeve shirt. Again, great in the summer months. It's just a plain linen t-shirt. You can kind of see through it. Um, I have to wear a black bra whenever I wear this. If you wear any kind of like nude or colored bra, you can totally see it. You can totally see the black bra as well, but you're not trying to, or I'm not trying to show it off. And so I find that that works with this guy. And it's just a really easy summer top to wear. It's black, and so it doesn't show any sweat stains or any other kind of stains. And again, hot climate, that is an important factor. Then I have three three quarter sleeve tops. This guy is a bit wrinkly because I think it took all of three minutes for me to pull it out of the dryer and it decided to wrinkle in that time, but I will steam it or something before I wear it. So I have three three quarter sleeve tops and 
Kind of the reason I have a lot of three quarter sleeve tops is because I have psoriasis and so I, I no longer have like lesions on my body, but I used to have, um, before I got treated with psoriasis, I now, for psoriasis, I now take from Faya and so that's gotten rid of just about everything on my skin. But I think the reason I um, have had a long love of three quarter sleeve tops is because they would cover my elbows. And so back when psoriasis was a problem for me, I loved three quarter sleeve tops because I didn't have to worry about exposing parts of my body that had things on it that I didn't want to show. I still love them. I think they're really sleek. And these three, uh, three quarter sleeve tops I have are all, they're all the same top. Target used to make these and now I don't think they make I think they've changed a little bit the cut and fit of the shirts, which is kind of disappointing. At one time I had something like eight or nine of the same shirt and now I'm down to three, but I love them. They are all about neck, which is kind of, I don't know, a little bit French, a little bit kind of sophisticated looking, the shape of it I really like. So I have this black and white version, great in the spring and summer especially. I have this reddish burgundy color, great in the fall, but I wear it all year. And then I have a black version as well. And I wear this all the time with just a plain pair of dark skinny jeans. And it's a kind of subtle, but still put together outfit. So these three guys are great. Target, if you're watching this, please make the shirt again. And then I have six long sleeve tops. I'll get those guys out of the way. So. Half of them are white, and I've been lately kind of wanting to have almost an entirely black and white wardrobe. I'm not to that point yet. I'm still kind of experimenting with it, but I like the idea of having black and white pieces comprising the majority of my wardrobe and then fun pops of color and texture as outerwear or accessories or shoes. Um, and when I say pops of colors, I mean like burgundies or olive greens. I used to have a ton of olive green in my wardrobe, and now I think I only have this shirt, and then I do have another outerwear piece that is also green. Anyway, I'm kind of experimenting with how I might push my wardrobe in a little bit more of a, a neutral direction, but this is what I'm working with so far. I've got these three white shirts. This one is actually new. Um, so this is the first new piece since whenever the last time I talked about my wardrobe was. Um, I got this guy from J. Crew just about a week ago, and it's linen, and my husband put it in the dryer, and it shrunk a little bit, which is really sad. Um, but actually, the body of it still fits me just fine. It's just the sleeves that have shrunken, and I wear it with the sleeves rolled up all the time. It's a linen shirt, so I don't think I'm going to be wearing it not in the summer, and for the entire summer, I'm going to have the sleeves rolled up. So. Maybe one day I might need to get another linen replacement, another white linen shirt replacement for this, um, since my husband did unfortunately shrink this one. But for now, um, for now I like having uh, a lighter option because my other two white shirts are just a, a normal cotton, like crisper kind of fabric. Um, I like wearing these particularly under sweaters in the winter. I think it just sort of makes the whole outfit look a bit more polished if you have a little peak of collar and sleeve coming out from underneath the sweater. And it's an extra layer, so it helps to keep you warm as well. Plus these are great just default pieces to wear under blazers when I wanna look a little more polished. So I have two of these guys. This one is the Ann Taylor Perfect shirt. It's great if you are a bustier lady, then Ann Taylor has got it figured out. Um, and this guy came from Banana Republic. I did have it tailored though because it flared a ton at the hips and I have no hips to speak of. And so I got it brought in a little bit for me, but they have different sort of, I don't know what to call this, the, the sleeve or the cuff length at the end is different and a little bit of a different style on each of them. So the Banana Republic one I have is a little more formal and the Ann Taylor one is just a tiny bit, a hair more casual. So I like having both of these guys for now. I realize that I probably don't need two white shirts that are almost identical. So maybe in the future I will pare down to one, but like I was saying, I'm actually kind of thinking of pushing my wardrobe in a more black and white direction. So. Maybe I'll hang on to these, we shall see. These are the only, this is the only thing that is kind of close to a duplicate in my closet that I can think of. Well, other than the three three-quarter shirts that are the same, but in different colors. Um, 
So it's a little bit weird and I kind of have to justify this to myself having two shirts that are so similar, but I'm keeping it for now and maybe one day that will become my uniform. We shall see. So my final three long sleeve shirts are these guys. They are, I think, all very old purchases from Forever 21, like five, maybe four or five years ago. Um, I've had them for a long time. So this black and white star shirt, I really love, and I know I've talked before about sort of how in the past I, in the past, let's just go down memory lane, in the past I, before I started minimizing my wardrobe, I had this weird idea that I would save my favorite pieces. I wouldn't allow myself to wear my favorite pieces because I thought by wearing them, I was risking messing them up. And then I, I just couldn't bring myself to wear those favorite pieces because I didn't want any damage to come to them. And so I would never wear them. And now that I have so few pieces in my wardrobe, I do wear everything in my wardrobe is a favorite piece. And I do wear things pretty consistently, but there are still some things that I don't wear as much as others. Even if you have 31 items in your wardrobe, you're gonna find that you gravitate towards some things more than others. And this is one of those items for me. I love it. I haven't wanted to let it go. It's really fun to wear in the fall, especially, I don't know, October around then. It's like a sort of Halloween-y, witchy type thing. Although I'll, I love stars and I will wear this all year round. Um, it's another shirt that is, uh, you can roll the sleeves up, you can sort of do a French tuck and sort of dress it up or down a little bit if you want to. It's a versatile shirt. Um, haven't been able to bring myself to let it go, but I sort of have an inward battle knowing that it's a pattern. And if I, if I were wearing this as often as some of my other pieces, then people would notice it. And that bothers me a little bit, but not enough to have let it go so far. So this guy, of course, is staying. I'm not getting rid of anything in my wardrobe today. I'm just walking through stuff, just so you know. This is just a chatty video. Next, I have these two shirts. I have a green version and a black version. They're the same shirt. I think they are made of... Let's figure this out. They're from Forever 21, so I'm sure it's something terrible. Oh, I actually cut that one off. I think they're made of rayon, um, but they dry super fast. That's why I wanted to mention the fabric name. Um, it's, a, it's a unique feeling fabric. They dry super fast. They have a little bit of a crinkle to them and a little bit of a texture, which I like. I wish they weren't a synthetic fabric, um, but I guess rayon of all the other fabrics is not the worst one in the world. But anyway, they've lasted me a long time. They're from Forever 21. They're from, they have synthetic fabrics, but for as long as they've lasted me, I think they were good purchases. So this black shirt, kind of like the three quarter sleeve black top I wear all the time with just a pair of skinny black denim pants. And this guy I wear mostly with black pants because he needs a little bit of contrast. This is also a weird, tricky green to work with. You can't really, it doesn't play very nice with denim. So it much prefers to be paired with black. So those are all of my tops. I guess we should go into sweaters, even though we're kind of set up here. I'm gonna move the camera and we can talk about those. While I'm moving things around, if you're new around here, this is what my closet looks like. Up here, I have my travel backpack. It's also where I keep all of my ski clothes, and including my helmet. Um, the only item of ski clothing that is not in there is my ski jacket, which also lives in the front closet. But everything else is crammed in there, and that's the bag that I like to travel with if it's a, a quick trip. Um, although I did go to the UK for two weeks and just traveled entirely out of that backpack. So sometimes it's not a quick trip, but that backpack is uh, really useful for travel. This is where my sweaters are. This is the little Ikea container that stores all of my socks and underwear all folded up. Here is where I typically keep lounge clothes and workout gear. My bathing suit is still drying and that is in the laundry room, but I have two workout tops in there right now. And this is where my bras live. And then all of my clothes hang right here. Whenever I've worn something, I then hang it back up and put it on this side of the closet divider and sort of push them over there and that allows me to get more use out of an item before I need to wash it because it's hanging and it's not going to get wrinkled and it can sort of air out. And then back here, um, somebody recommended that I hang my pajama sets. I previously had these folded up 
on the closet shelf up there and that was good advice so I put them back there and then down here are my shoes tall boots short boots trainers that I only wear to the gym tennis shoes that I wear everywhere sandals sandals house slippers and then I have another pair of flip-flops that are I have no idea probably somewhere else in the house and then I have a stack of photos that I have yet to digitize but this is what my closet looks like, in case you were curious. So onto sweaters, they live up there. All right, these are my sweaters. Now I said I had three to four, depending on how you look at it. And the reason, well, first of all, I should say that I am not comfortable owning just these in the sweater department. I previously had other sweaters, but at the end of last fall or at the end of last winter, several of them bit the dust. I had a green one die, a black one, and a burgundy one, and I will probably replace all of them with the exact same sweater if I can find them come fall, but this is what I'm working with right now. And I say three to four because both of these shirts, both of these tops were previously in my loungewear pile, but I wear this sweatshirt so much. I wear it basically all winter. And so I had to tell myself like, you know what? That's not your loungewear. This is part of your wardrobe. You wear it all the time. And so if this is suddenly in my wardrobe, then that kind of brought this shirt into question. But really, this is not a sweater. It's just like a long sleeve shirt. But I don't wear this one out as much. I really just wear this lounging around the house. But suddenly this becoming part of my wardrobe brought this one into question. But I would say really that I have three sweaters slash sweatshirts right now. I have this navy sweatshirt. Both of these are v-neck, or not sweatshirt, sweater. Both of these are v-necks. Um, this is a cashmere sweater. It's from Everlane. It's been holding up really well. It is an incredibly dark navy. I love that it's a rich navy, but whenever I wear it with black pants, I kind of want my pants to be darker than my sweater, and that has never been the case. This is so incredibly dark and rich. It's really nice, but if you've been considering it, just be warned. This is a plain white v-neck sweater from Forever 21, another really old purchase, don't judge me. I will try to replace it with a better sweater with better fabric in the future. And then this Breckenridge sweatshirt I wear all the time. But I am definitely in the market for new sweaters. I will stock up come fall. And we're back. So now I have just shorts and pants to go through. So as I mentioned before, I have four pairs of shorts. If you watch my very first video, I had something like 18 pairs of shorts. It was ridiculous. I can't remember, but go back and watch my first video. If you want to see how many shorts one person can own, it was kind of crazy. Now I own four pairs of shorts, which might be a little out of proportion for other minimalist closets you may have seen, but again, warm climate, shorts are important to me. So I have a pair of white shorts. I have this pair of kind of like a taupey color, a little bit gray, a little bit brown, kind of tacky-ish shorts. And then I have a pair of medium denim shorts and a pair of dark denim shorts. To be honest, the shorts that I wear the most are these two pairs of denim shorts. I love the white shorts. They're like a fun pop of not color, but it, it's a fun, bright accent to wear sometimes, especially in the summertime. Um, they're great, but I don't get terribly much use out of them, mostly just because it's kind of impractical to wear white shorts, depending on where you're going. They get dirty easily, so I don't wear them too often, but they are fun and they kind of make any outfit a little bit more stylish because they are fun bright white shorts. So I do like having those. These gray shorts are a little bit, I love the color. I bought these forever ago at a Gap outlet mall or a, a Gap outlet store at some outlet mall. Bought them forever ago. They're a little big on me and so they look good for the first half hour whenever I wear them and then they get creased very quickly and they just sort of bag out a little bit. I've considered getting them tailored. I'm not a huge fan of these zippers on the side. I guess that was a thing whenever I bought them, um, but 
Now, I'm not a huge fan of these accent zippers on the pocket, but usually whatever top I'm wearing them with covers that up. And I do really like the color. They are very, the color is super versatile. So I've considered getting them tailored just so they don't sort of balloon out on my legs whenever I've worn them for more than half an hour. But I haven't actually brought myself to do that yet. And they still, I, I find myself wearing these a lot in the spring. Whenever it starts to get warm, this is just a really good transition color. It's not summer yet, but they're still shorts. Anyway, I like them for their color. But again, the shorts that I wear most often are these two pairs of denim shorts. I guess that's not really a surprise. They're super versatile. Um, they hold up really wear well. I can wear these for like a week. Whenever I go to work, I, as I said, I like take off whatever I've been wearing for the day, hang them back up and just sort of put them on the other side of my closet. And typically in the summer, I just change into shorts. So I can be wearing a pair of these shorts for evenings for an entire week. And I think they hold up just fine. They don't bag out. They don't stretch out too much. They look great. Um, so I get a ton of use out of those. Maybe one day in the future, if I were paring down my closet, if I like had to get rid of shorts, then I would get rid of the white ones and the sort of taupey colored ones, even though those are the fun ones, because I actually wear these the most. And now jeans and pants. I guess we can tackle those categories all at one time because they're right here and there aren't that many of them. So I have a light pair of super skinny jeans. These are incredibly tight. Um, I guess they're more of like a light medium wash, but they're the lightest pair of jeans I own. So I consider them a light pair of denim. Um, these ironically are actually like the thickest denim I have, but the color is most useful during the summer because it's a lighter wash. Um, so I find myself wearing these a lot in the summer to work. They're fine. And honestly at work in the summer, that's when the air conditioner is going full blast. And so these keep me warm in cold offices during the summer. And then I have two pairs of darker denim. Um, you can probably tell on camera that some of the elastic has blown out right here where the sort of whiskering is. Um, but these are by Paige. I've had them for probably two or three years. I'm going to go with three years. I feel like I've had them for a good long time. Um, but these fit me really well. Uh, I wish they were a little bit higher waisted, but other than that, and like the elastic parts, you can't actually see whenever I'm wearing them. You can only see it when it's hanging and not actually worn on my body. So I think they still have a good amount of time in them before I need to find a replacement. And then these pants, I bought these, these two, these two pairs of jeans. They're both from Gap. I have a black version and a darker denim version. I think these are the true skinny, I don't know, something true skinny 360. That's all I remember about them. Um, but I think they, they fit me very well. They're both petite sized, um, and they, they've held up, but the black ones, okay. The, the blue ones have held up. The blue ones are good. I can wear these as much as I can. The page ones, the black ones, I have yet to find any black denim that doesn't immediately start fading. I wouldn't call these black anymore. I would call them gray. And the only thing I can sort of, the only thing I still wear these with is my Breckenridge sweatshirt. That's a gray top. This is like a little bit darker gray than that, but everything else, it doesn't come off as black. If I pair them with anything else, it, it doesn't look black. It just looks like a super faded pair of old black jeans. And that's not the look I'm going for. I want something that'll really retain its color. I have yet to find that, but I haven't let go of them because something in my mind tells me like, no, you can't not own a pair of black jeans, but I really never wear them. There are, if I try to pair these with any other thing, they just look like super kind of nineties and faded. And that's not the look that I'm going for. So I've held on to them just because I haven't found another viable pair of black jeans, but if anybody knows of black jeans that just sort of magically hold their color and stay rich and black, please let me know. Some people gave some examples last time or gave some suggestions last time. And there were a few that I tried before and it was the fit that didn't work for me. Um, so I will stay on the hunt, but if you found a magical pair of black jeans that does not lose its color, I would love to own them. And then my last 
pair of pants are these black pants. They're just a plain pair of black trousers from Ann Taylor Loft. They are also petites. I think these are the Marissa fit. I, again, no hips to speak of, and so the Marissa fit works really well on me. That's the sort of more straight one. The Marissa is like the opposite of the curvy fit, so that's what I wear. Um, these hold up really nicely. They, uh, whenever I first bought them, they were a little tight in the knees, and so I was a little bit concerned, like, bending down or sitting in a chair or something, but that went away pretty quickly, and there are no stretch marks that I can see on them, and so... These have held up, they sort of molded to my body, and I will be very sad if Ann Taylor ever stops wearing these. A part of me thinks that I should get rid of my black jeans and just move over more to pants, rely less on denim in my wardrobe, and own more proper trousers, especially at work. I think that might make me feel a little more polished and a little more professional. I haven't come to that point yet, but maybe that's something that I'm considering doing in my wardrobe. So now let's go talk about outerwear. We are now in my entryway, and this is the closet leading off of it. This is where I store all of my outerwear, and I've made a video about this before, so if you wanna see what it looked like before now, then I will link that in the description down below. But before we get into outerwear, actually, I guess we should talk about bags, because this is one of the only other new items I have. Before now, I wore this bag every day. This is my everyday bag. I wore this for over two years every single day. This is the large black tassel bag from Cambridge Satchel Company. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love that brand. But in the winter, I have a tendency of sort of relying more on the pockets of my outerwear than using an actual bag, especially during the week if I'm just running from my car to the office or running a quick errand after work, then I find it easier to just sort of tuck whatever I need from my purse, put it in my pockets, and then I don't have to carry around a bag. And at the end of this winter, I got really used to operating that way. And so going into summer, I wanted something less bulky than this bag. I'm never getting rid of this bag. I love this bag, but I wanted something a little bit lighter. And so I got this little wristlet from Mark and Graham. It's a Pottery Barn, William Sonoma. It's a, it's a William Sonoma brand. I'm pretty sure that Mark and Graham just makes leather goods out of any leather scraps that William Sonoma brands have left over. That's what I would do. And it is a really nice leather. I think this was $35 before monogramming. I got the other side monogrammed and shipping. I think it was 35 bucks. So nice. Um, and this is some staining that I went to a party and it was on a table that somebody spilled a drink on and I have 10 million leather cleaners that I should use on it, but I actually kind of like it. It's adding a little bit of a patina, so I should clean that off. But this is the only other purchase apart from that white linen shirt that I showed you earlier that is new to my wardrobe. Anyway, on to outerwear. So this is where I store all of my outerwear and my husband stores his on the other side. I have five pieces of outerwear that are in my wardrobe. I have this green field jacket. I was in the market for a field jacket for a long time and every other option I found had a ton of gold hardware on the front and I wanted something really basic. And so I found this at Target one day and I jumped on it and it's held up really nicely. The only thing that is kind of regrettable about it is that I wish it had lining. It does not, but it's still a nice easy field jacket for spring and fall whenever you just need a quick something to go over whatever you're wearing and give you an extra layer. And then I have the first of two what I call blazers, although this may not be a blazer in everyone's book. It's kind of like a jacket blazer half robe with these big pockets on the front, which makes it a little bit fun. But this guy, I remember when I saw it for the first time, I really loved it, but I thought like, how often am I actually going to wear it? And then a few months later, I saw it again in store. I took it as a sign and I bought it. And I wear this guy constantly in the fall and winter. And then I have this other blazer from Ann Taylor Loft. You'll notice a pattern. I buy a lot of clothes from stores that actually carry petites in stores so I can try them on for size instead of having to order online. So I have a lot of stuff from Ann Taylor, Ann Taylor Loft and Banana Republic because they actually stock petite things. Anyway, um, I've had this for, I think, 
going on two years. It's really great in the fall and winter, but I think you can even wear it in the spring. Um, you can still wear gray in the spring. It's a lighter wool blend, so it is good for those transitional seasons. And then I have back here, penultimate coat. Oh, it's got some thread on it. There we go. Um, this is a wool blend three quarter coat that I got several years ago from Mango. I actually wore this as like my winter coat for, um, for a winter or two, I want to say. And it's a lighter wool blend. If you live somewhere up north, then this wouldn't do as a winter coat, but it served just fine for where I'm at. It's not a petite, but I can still get away with it. And it has this nice funnel neck, um, which makes it a bit dramatic. And then... My last piece in my actual wardrobe, there's my ski jacket. I don't actually consider that part of my wardrobe, but my last piece of my actual wardrobe is this puffy coat from the North Face. I got this at the beginning of the winter season last year. I previously had a red wool pea coat from J. Crew and I got a ton of use out of that coat, but then it was not a petite and I discovered that I was and I could sort of not unsee the, the ill-fitting ...ness of it, and so I decided it needed a replacement. I was looking for a replacement for a long time, and for a while I was looking for another wool coat to kind of have that polish that the pea coat had, and eventually I just decided, like, even if I bought another wool coat, I would really want a puffer coat to actually keep me warm, and so I decided to bite the bullet and just go with a puffer coat instead. It's really practical. Everyone on the planet has this coat, or tons of people do, and it does its job, and I have no complaints. So those are all my pieces of outerwear. All right, that is my 31 item wardrobe for the entire year. I don't have any kind of capsule wardrobe. There's not another room somewhere with other clothing that I cycle through whenever I get bored. That's not how I operate. This is the clothing that sustains me for the entire year and it's been working for me for a long time. Now, if you are not new to my channel and you've been following my videos for any length of time, then this was probably old hat to you. You've probably seen these items before, but I wanted to talk through it anyway to kind of prove two points. One is that it's incredibly important to identify your style and the pieces that work for your lifestyle. And two, once you do that, the need to continually shop and to continually add to your wardrobe really subsides, or at least it has in my case. Now, whenever I shop, it's a very slow and deliberate process. I don't add things very often, and that's what works for me. So for those of you who have been asking for a wardrobe update, apologies if this wasn't enough of an update, but these are the pieces that work for me, and any changes are going to be incredibly gradual. Again, if you are in the process of paring down your wardrobe, first, I cannot stress enough, identify your style and the pieces that work for your lifestyle. I've made a couple of videos on this topic, so I will link those in the description down below if you want to check those out. But I hope that sort of hearing my thought process for the pieces in my wardrobe and sort of hearing about how I continually think about my wardrobe and how my thought process is evolving can hopefully help you out if you're still deciding what pieces you want to include in yours. That's going to be it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.